We are fresh off some primaries last night, many more still to come and a number of great candidates that if you have not had your state series of primaries yet, you might still want to support. We've been profiling them for several months of the program now. And we're lucky to be joined by another candidate running in the sixth district, a Democratic primary in Arizona. Anita Malik joins us on the show right now. Welcome Hi, to the show. hello. Thank great, you, thank you for having me. Great to have you on. So look, there's a number of things I wanna to talk to you about. First of all though, you are, we have many of these in this cycle, a first time candidate, is that correct? That's right, yes. So I have read over your bio and you've previously worked in journalism, in sort of like content development in the tech industry. What made you in this particular cycle want to transition out of those industries and move into elected government? You know, I think a big part of it is that there is no tech leadership in DC. Let's be frank about that. Um, and coming from technology and also being in the media, I was able to see that we have this clear void of what's happening there and needing to not just talk about tech issues when data breaches happen, for example, or election security happens, but be proactive about these things. I mean, we look at the future of what's happening with artificial intelligence and blockchain. And nobody legislatively is having that conversation. So that was a big concern of mine. Um, and one of the reasons I thought this is the time to challenge every house seat, really for the future of our families, mm -hmm. and that I felt like I could do the job. Well, yes, you, you do certainly come at these topics from a, a different perspective, a more hands on yes. perspective. So let, let's turn to one of the topics that you talked about there. So election security, um, we do hear a little bit about the security of our elections over the past year or so. But in terms of the tech side of that, um, what do you think that, that is left be, being left out of the conversation? You know, I think there was the move after the hanging chad, right, to the move to everything being digital. Um, and that's great, but the, the solution of that digital setup was not correct. And so I think we do, I support actually going, making sure we have paper audit trails. So paper ballots along with a system that ensures transparency. And you know, I think blockchain is one of those ideas that we can look at that make sure that, that it's immutable. And if there is hacking, we can see that and that there's transparency across the board. These aren't individual systems um, where people don't know actually what's happened. And with all the hacking that's going on and we're seeing you know, young kids able to hack into the, mm -hmm. these machines, we need to have that conversation. But I think it needs to be twofold. It needs to be paper and it needs to be tech enabled as well. And that's where it's interesting because I feel like as a country and politically, we go from one or the other, people are fighting over that, but we need a system that incorporates both. Yeah, you know, I'm glad that you brought up the uh, the kids because I noticed that in the news too. There's that big uh, yearly hackers uh, conference, yes. and uh, the the circumstances under which they do those sorts of tests aren't necessarily identical to a real world situation. But the real world right. is messy too. So with that, and you know, concerns about outside foreign actors, um, how confident are you in terms of the security of uh, of your primary of the general elections coming up later this year? You know, I feel like there's been a lot of progress made here in Arizona, here in Maricopa County. Um, we have a new county recorder as of 2016. He's made some great improvements on the system. It's actually won several awards. And so we feel very strong about it. You know, I think that this is election security. These never stay in my ears. <laughs> um, election security is definitely something that's going to be an ongoing process. But I think that we have made great strides here, particularly in Maricopa County. Uh, hi, Anita. This is Jr. Um, I, I was wondering also because you know you know how, how divided the country is on security and and actually who has done what. But whenever an election ends, there's always the question of recounts and and who's in charge of it and right. the, uh, the the legitimacy of that recount or even just from the beginning in the first place. Um, so if coming from your side of it, if you're bringing election security or at least the cyber part of it. How do we, I'm gonna know this is a hard question to answer, but this, how do we make sure that the general public trusts one side or the other that brings in that kind of security? Like if they say, you know, Anita's gonna right. bring it in, but we right. don't trust her because she's a progressive, she's just trying to rig it in her favor now. You know, people are so rabid on that now. How do we convince them? That's why I think it's very important that we have both sides to this, because if you have a paper audit trail, there's not a lot people could say that you're trying to rig a system. So yes, people are suspect of technology. That's something that's part of our culture. Um, but I think if you have both, you can show that you know the two are matching up. And that's important to convince people and persuade them that look, we really have the best interest here for just making sure everybody's vote counts, everybody gets that chance. I definitely agree that a paper trail is more secure, but we did find out earlier this week that Donald Trump occasionally destroys the paper trail when he eats notes that are given to him. That's, that was literally in the news. Um, so I, wa okay. I wanna turn now to your recently released white paper, Healthy yes. Worker, Healthy Economy, where you break down right. 
some of the elements that you say uh, have created an unhealthy economy. So could you summarize that for our viewers? Sure, you know, I started this race and for me, it was a, an interesting, I think, message point for the district, which was, look, I come from business, I come from tech, but I care about where we're going as a country, which is we have lost the idea of having a healthy workforce and having that work-life balance, which is part of the American dream, which is what my father came here for. You work hard, but you get to enjoy those rewards with your family and that time. And so what I've looked at is the productivity um, that we're losing because we're not treating our workers okay. We don't have social safety nets in place. And in particular, I'm very passionate about paid sick leave, guaranteed paid sick leave, and guaranteed maternity and paternity leave. Both of those things have proven in private industries where people are already doing this, that productivity goes up, morale goes up, turnover goes down. And we're actually seeing, particularly with maternity and paternity leave, that that's better for the children. And we need to start thinking, we're so short-sighted right now politically and as a country, we need to start thinking about that future and, and what we're, you know, what America is going to be and providing for those future generations. And so these are, you know, the white paper covers a lot of other things that I would do as, in terms of social safety nets, protecting social security, raising the cap, funding into innovation that has really created jobs over the years, and then making sure obviously we protect our healthcare and promote funding into education across everywhere from pre-K to um, higher education. But those two things are where I'd really start, is the guaranteed paid sick leave and the guaranteed paid and paternity leave. And uh, you know, I, I wanna thank you for covering so many different topics uh, in your paper, which uh, as people can see on the bottom of the screen is available at anitaforarizona.com. I did wanna ask you about one other area, just because uh, sure. during our election coverage last night, Jenk Uger and Ben Mankiewicz and myself, we, we spoke about um, proposals to eliminate student loan debt. And I know in your paper, you have a section about refinancing and right. uh, possible elimination. What do you think about proposals that would in effect eliminate a significant portion or all of current student loan debt? I think that would be great. I mean, I'm a big proponent of let's slash that completely if we can. Let's look at innovative payoff solutions. You know, I think that nobody is opposed right now to say, hey, let's let them refinance. It's a it's a financial instrument that should be able to be refinanced. But also, if there is, you know, they're going into an industry where we need workers, let them pay that off by doing that work. You know, let's work on solutions that work for everybody. But we should not have this generation. The millennials and you know future generations burdened with this debt. It is hurting our economy, and that's that's the issue that I think people fail to talk about is that this is an economic issue for every generation, not just if you have a kid that has that debt. Yeah. yeah. Well, Anita, I want to thank you for joining us on the show. A great conversation yeah. that I know is uh, is ongoing in your race. You've uh, you're going up against a couple of uh, other primary opponents, and uh, if you do win on August twenty eighth, uh, David yeah. Schweikert, the current Republican incumbent. Uh, I think he could he could do for a good debate about some of these topics. Yes, we would love to debate and we hope he will accept the invitation to debate. <laughs> he hasn't in the past. I think he knows he is in some hot water now and he will need to. Um, and yeah, we're very excited about the primary. It's, we're coming up on le less than two weeks. We just got endorsed today by the Arizona Republic here, the big paper here. So we feel very good about it. Okay, well, thank you again for joining us and good luck in your Thank race. you, thank you. Thank you so much for watching this video from The Damage Report. Please don't forget to like the video and also to subscribe to the channel so that you get notified as soon as new videos become available. To hear even more about both this topic and other issues not being covered nearly enough by the mainstream media, you're gonna wanna tune in every morning to our full hour long show. That's at 12 p.m. Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific, available on the TYT Network channel on YouTube TV.